Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. I was able to attend an exclusive premiere for The Batman, so today I'll be conducting a spoiler-free review of the film, which is set to release in theaters on March 4th. I'll be releasing an in-depth analysis on The Batman soon, so if you're interested, please be sure to subscribe. Now, let's get into this video. The Batman is DC's newest flagship comic book film, directed by Matt Reeves. The film stars Robert Pattinson as Batman, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, and Paul Dano as the Riddler. This movie was first announced in early 2019, and it's safe to say that it was my most anticipated movie ever. And now, I can finally tell you, this film did not disappoint in the slightest. This movie is absolutely phenomenal. Every aspect of it is incredible, and it may very well be one of, if not the best comic book movie I have ever seen. As crazy as it sounds to say out loud, this film definitely provides solid competition for Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight. The Batman takes one of the most grounded, realistic approaches to a comic book movie. This film is staggeringly dark, intimate, and enthralling. First off, I'd like to say that I'm a fan of Matt Reeves' movies, and know full well that he's a talented director. But in all honesty, I really did not expect such an insane level of quality from his directing work in this film. Matt Reeves' work with this movie absolutely blew me away. This film's writing and cinematography are stunning, and do their duty to keep you riveted throughout the entirety of this film. This film is three hours long, and it honestly feels like two. The Batman is exactly what Reeves promised it would be, and everything I could have ever hoped for. This film does a perfect job at fulfilling the role of a thriller, neo-noir detective film. Reeves drew inspiration from David Fincher movies like Seven, and his integration of the superhero genre with neo-noir detective genre is honestly flawless. Even though previous adaptations of Batman, such as The Dark Knight or Mask of the Phantasm, have shown the detective side of the character, it's never been shown to this extent. This film's mystery in the detective work that's shown is absolutely captivating. Batman's knowledge, problem solving, and technical skills really shine through in this film to an amazing degree. The entire film acts as one giant puzzle. It's full of violent and eerie crime scenes, detective work, and the really, really unsettling presence of the Riddler. Paul Dano as the Riddler has to be one of the most unexpectedly brilliant casting choices in a long time. He does a stunning job at bringing this psychopathic, maniacal adaptation of the Riddler to life, and it creates for one of the most interesting characters to watch on screen, if not one of the most unique to date. The Riddler is very reminiscent of true crime serial killers such as the Zodiac Killer. He leaves notes at every crime scene, messes around with the police, and leaves ciphers for Batman to work through. The Riddler doesn't feel like a comic book character or even a fictional character at all. Reeves did an amazing job of bringing the character down to a plane of reality in which he feels very, very real, and this makes for some genuinely terrifying sequences throughout the film. Zoe Kravitz as Selina Kyle was an exceptional choice because boy does she really bring the character of Catwoman to life. Catwoman is nothing short of badass, self-sufficient, and most important of all, respectable. She doesn't play the role of the classic love interest or damsel in distress. Instead, she spends a large portion of the film working on her own agenda, tracking down and apprehending criminals, and helping Batman work through the film's mystery. Not only this, but Zoe and Robert have amazing chemistry together, and their interactions on screen are simultaneously alluring and tender. Now, before I dive into the obvious star of the show, I want to give a brief mention to a couple of the other amazing characters in the film. First off, Colin Farrell is totally unrecognizable as the Penguin, and does an amazing job of bringing the character to life in a way that matches the gritty realism of the film. The Penguin features in one of the coolest car chase sequences I have ever seen on screen. The sequence is fast paced, incredibly well edited, and the choreography is beautifully executed. Next, Jeffrey Wright's Jim Gordon was also really interesting. Much like in the Dark Knight trilogy, this version of Jim Gordon is often right in the middle of the fray, right alongside Batman. I really enjoyed watching Gordon work with Batman almost every step of the way to solve the various crimes of the film. Lastly, Andy Serkis as Alfred was a pleasantly surprising and captivating performance. It's cool to see Serkis finally play a serious, dignified character in which we can see his true abilities as an actor shine through. He isn't present for a majority of the film, but the scenes in which he and Bruce interact are moving and emotional. Now for the star of this film, 
Robert Pattinson as Batman. I don't care what anyone says, and I don't understand why so many people are ripping on this guy as an actor. Forget his past movies, Robert Pattinson has improved tremendously as an actor in the past several years. His performances in Tenet and The Lighthouse were incredible, and the performance he delivers as Batman is nothing short of phenomenal. The work that both Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson put into this film's incarnation of Batman is simply beautiful, and I love it. This film takes place two years into Batman's crime fighting, and it introduces us to a deeply broken, depressed, and enraged Bruce Wayne. His personal story arc acts much like a coming-of-age story. What's also interesting is that for a solid portion of the film, Robert Pattinson is actually Batman, and not Bruce Wayne. And I actually really enjoy this take on the character. Batman has always represented the dark, inner turmoil and rage inside of Bruce, so it's only fitting that this film gives almost all of its screen time to Batman. This film's take on the character is unique, powerful, and provides a really nice breath of fresh air. This version of Batman is dark and violent, almost eerie. Matt Reeves does a beautiful job at focusing your attention specifically on how Batman carries himself. His blocking, body language, and most important of all, his gaze. Robert Pattinson is an actor that can communicate so much through just his eyes. And I think Matt Reeves' decision to place so much importance on his gaze is a beautiful choice. And it makes for a much more interesting, unique, and compelling character. Not only this, but Batman tends to spend a majority of the film in the shadows. There are often sequences throughout this movie during which you only ever hear his intentionally heavy footsteps, and don't see him until he finally emerges from the dark. In fact, this Batman is noticeably quiet throughout the vast majority of the film, and rarely talks unless he needs to. He's calm and quiet, but explodes in well-choreographed, brutal violence at key points throughout the movie. This film really takes its time to focus on the details. It allows you to immerse yourself in each and every single scene to an astounding degree of effectiveness. This film is three hours long, and I feel like every single minute it spent was intentional and deserved. I honestly wouldn't have a problem if this film had been an hour longer. Reeves is stunningly meticulous when it comes to each sequence of the film, and with director of photography Greg Fraser behind the camera, this movie may very well be one of the most visually stunning films ever created. Every sequence in this film is simply beautiful. Almost the entirety of the film takes place at night, and most scenes are really, and I mean really, dark, with very little light in them. So when certain scenes do contain light in them, they provide a beautiful contrast to the rest of the film. There are consistent scenes that take place up high in Gotham during the sunrise and sunset, and these scenes are simply magnificent. The dark, gloomy nature of the film makes every light and color bloom. This film's world building is also fantastic. Its inspiration, Seven, is well renowned for its world building and atmospheric tension. The Batman does an incredible job of using similar techniques as Seven to create a Gotham that is truly dark, violent, and most important of all, filthy. The Batman builds one of the most compellingly sinister worlds I have ever seen. Even if you were to remove the story from the visuals, you would most assuredly still get the sense that the city portrayed by the film is corrupt down to its very core. This is probably the best portrayal of Gotham I have ever seen in a DC film to date. All in all, I absolutely loved this movie. It's exceedingly rare that I come out of a theater, even for a movie that I really enjoyed, with zero complaints. But I am serious when I say that there is nothing I would change with this film. The Batman is everything I could have ever hoped for, and may very well be the greatest comic book movie of all time. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'll be releasing an in-depth analysis of the Batman in the near future, so if you're interested in that, please subscribe and turn on notifications, leave a like, and let me know what your thoughts are down below. I'll see you all next time.